Hi everyone, so this is lecture 11 on Gauss elimination. So today we're going to continue what we started last time. Last time we learned how to solve uh, linear algebra problems by hand, um, doing a, a procedure called Gauss elimination. Um, today we're going to talk about how to code that in Python. Um, and there's two pieces to that here we can look at in our outline. The first is the forward substitution step, and the second is the backward substitution step. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So like I said, last time we talked about a systematic method for solving linear equations. And um, of course, I, I would imagine that you're all familiar with solving linear equations by hand. You've done it probably since at least an algebra class, maybe algebra two, uh, your second year of algebra in high school. Um, and so you think, well, why are we doing this again? Um, uh, well, we'd like to be able to solve uh, systems on computers. And so today we're gonna get to that finally. So um, the, we learned an algorithm or a, or a procedure um, that we can uh, uh, systematize and write down in code, and that's called Gauss elimination. All right. Um, so we're going to talk about that same procedure, that same algorithm again today. Um, let's just remind ourselves of a couple uh, things. So um, here we have uh, the just some notation for for a generic n by n matrix. Okay, so remember if we write this in vector format, we write ax equals b, or a dot x, or a times x equals b, where this is the dot product, or the inner product, or the matrix vector product. Okay, we can rewrite that in this way using index notation. We talked about this in the last lecture. So we said you can write this as a sum from j is 0 uh, to, or from 0 to n minus 1 of the elements of aij multiplied by elements of xj, so you do this sum over j, all right, and you get then this extra index i, and that gives you bi, right? And we can write this all out in component notation as follows. So here I have my a matrix a0, 0, a0, 1, all the way to a0, n minus 1, uh, across the column at row 0, all right? Remember that the first one is row, and the second one here, the second index is columns. And if I go down uh, the, the column uh, over the rows, I get a0, 0, a1, 0, and then a n minus 1, 0, all right? So that's my A matrix. This is uh, multiplied by the X vector, X0, X1, all the way to X n minus 1, and that's equal to the B vector, B0, B1, B n minus 1. Okay, so um, just to sort of remind us of a little bit of this notation, so let's uh, uh, go ahead and move on and, and look at forward elimination, okay? So now remember that the first step in forward elimination, or the first step is forward elimination is really what I want to say. So the first step in Gauss elimination is forward elimination. Okay, and remember that we're trying to go from this A matrix to what we said was an upper triangular matrix. So the A matrix looks like this, right? There's these elements here. I'm just putting dots where there would be numbers. And what we want to end up with is a U matrix where I've got only non-zero elements above the diagonal. So the diagonal and below can have zero elements, but only above the diagonal and on the diagonal do I have non-zero, okay? And forward elimination is this algorithm that allows us to do that, all right? So, so how do we make that upper triangular matrix U, okay? So um, remember, let me just describe in words the procedure so we can uh, refresh it in our mind. So we started um, in uh, column zero, right? Remember that we started out here in, in column zero and we said, um, I'm gonna start there and I'm gonna um, eliminate all of these elements that are below the diagonal. So I wanted to get to this case where I have those zeros, all right? So that's my first goal, is to start in that column and eliminate, okay? Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll put this as my goal. So goal is eliminate uh, all uh, rows below the diagonal. Okay, so that's my goal. So what do I do first is I find a ratio, right? So I find the ratio of A1, uh, 0 here to A0, 0. So I find the ratio where the diagonal is on the bottom. So A1, 0, 
A00, okay? Diagonal, uh, diagonal on bottom, okay? Um, and then I'm going to multiply that ratio by negative 1. And remember, the goal here then is going to be to eliminate this and get 0, but I have to apply it all the way across. So that's what I'm going to get to, okay? So then I'm going to multiply all elements of row 1, okay? And remember row 1, this is row 0 right here. And this is row 1, and this is row 2. So multiply all elements of row 1. Okay, so I'm going to multiply that one, that one, and that one by the ratio. <clears throat> by the ratio. Okay, and then... Uh, uh, and then add row zero, okay? So I multiply all of these by that, and then I add them to the guy above it. So maybe I'll draw another arrow with that. So I multiply and then add. Multiply, right? Maybe I'll put it, the, maybe I'll put my arrow the other way. And I add those guys in there, all right? Um, and this is gonna end up uh, replacing row one. All right, um, and then the other thing here is don't uh, forget B1, okay? So we also need to have this augmented matrix, right, where we include B1 out here. So don't forget B1, all right? So then we've done that, okay? Um, so now we're going to repeat for all rows uh, 2 n minus 1, right? So I'm going to repeat what I did here for all the rows up to n minus 1. Great. Okay, so that repeat takes me um, all the way back up to there, right? I did that part. Okay, now I'm going to repeat for all columns to uh, up uh, up until uh, I get to that column right there, okay? So I want to go down all of the uh, uh, the diagonals, okay? So repeat for all columns um, to only, oh, I already had a 2 there, to n minus 2, all right? I don't need to do this last column because I have the diagonal there, right? So that repeat will come up here and go to there. All right. Um, so before we step to the coding part, which I have uh, already loaded up to show us how this works, um, I want to note that we can write this more precisely with index notation. All right. And that should help us code it. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to write that down. We can write this more precisely with index notation. All right, so um, think about what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is I'm manipulating this matrix A. So I'm going to have this A, I, J, the elements of A, I, right? What are they going to be? Um, they're going to be equal to the old a, i, j. So I'm going to indicate um, the old one with a new index in the superscript called k. Okay? So um, up here, this is um, which update? Okay? So when I um, took this element here and took the red arrow and replaced it, that would make k go up, okay? That would replace that one. So that would give me the update. So I take the old one, right? And what am I doing? I'm subtracting the ratio. Subtracting the ratio of a i k divided by a k k, right? So now you're gonna say, well, where, where are these coming from? Okay, so notice that this 
looks just like this guy, A10 over A00. So this is my ratio with the diagonal on the bottom. Okay, and then you might say, well, why, why is the K there? So the K is telling me which, uh, uh, which um, diagonal that I'm working on. So the update is the same as the number of the diagonal, right? So which update here, and that is the same as the which, uh, dia which element on the diagonal. Okay, that's K, right? So look at that here for a second. I have AKK. That's telling me that the diagonal, right, is 0, 0 in that first one, 0, 0 right there, all right? Um, I here, I is telling me which row I'm on, right? And J is telling me which column I'm on. And I guess I, K here, I said, is which column or diagonal I'm working on. Okay, so when I set up here that I'm, uh, you know, when I, when I look at this procedure, start in column zero, that one right there, that is K. All right, then when I find the ratio, okay, I've got zero, zero, look, there's a zero right there for the K. Okay, then multiply all of the elements of row one, well, that loops across all of the columns, okay, so that row one right there, that is um, I, and right there, repeat for all the rows, that's I, repeat for all the columns, that's gonna be K. So then when I go across here, and I multiply all the elements, that's my J, okay? That's all the columns. All right, so let's see if we can uh, look at this again. So I'm taking AIJ and updating it from the old AIJ minus the ratio, okay? Um, and then what I need to multiply, I need to multiply that by the element that was um, the, the row I'm on, so that's K, J, right? So I'm gonna go over all the columns, and again, um, this is the, um, you know, the, the update I'm on, so it's K, J. Okay, so um, that is my index notation, and of course, these all over here are at the old value, so they have a superscript K. All right, so that's a little messy, so I'm gonna rewrite it one more time just to put it down here. Rewrite. AIJ at K plus one is equal to AIJ at K minus AIK at K divided by AKK at K multiplied by AKJ at K. Okay. So many indices, all right? Um, one more thing to write down before we start to think about coding it and talking through it, is we have to remember to update B. So don't forget B. So BI at K plus one, okay, is the old B, all right, minus the same thing, the ratio, AIK divided by AKK, Wrote the superscript. Looks like I didn't give myself enough space here. Let me move my, let me move that down so I can have a little more space. So I don't crunch them together. A I K at K, A K K at K, multiplied by B K at K. All right. So this is, don't forget B. All right? So hopefully this is clear. If it's not clear, stop the video right here, all right? And go back and either watch what I explained again or go back and work it through for yourself. Convince yourself of two things. First, convince yourself that this procedure is what you do when you do it by hand. Hopefully you've done that from the last homework, but if you haven't, go back and convince yourself of that again. Next, 
I want you to convince yourself that this algorithm right here, this procedure, is expressed in this piece right here, okay? Um, where I take my old AIJ, I subtract a ratio multiplied by the old row, okay? Um, or, or excuse me, the row above, where I multiply by this row above and add it in, okay? When I take that ratio and multiply by the row above, add it in, all right? That's what this is saying right here and I use that to replace the new thing. Convince yourself that that's true, all right? Um, I'm realizing as I'm saying this, I forgot to write down uh, the counting we do for the i, j, and k. So let me just make sure I do that really quick so I say that one more time, okay? So um, let me put k up here first, actually. So k, this is this one, right? I start in column zero. So k counts starting at zero and goes all the way down, but ends before that last one. So k goes from zero, one, all the way to n minus two. Why n minus two? Because we're going zero to n minus one is the total size, right? So n minus two is one before the end. One before end, okay? I, right? I is the row that we're working on. So I starts below the diagonal. So here it starts uh, at one, but if I'm starting here, it's going to, you know, if I'm on this diagonal, it's going to be there. So it actually depends on k. So I starts at k plus one, goes to k plus two all the way, okay, and when does it end? Well, it has to end all the way at the bottom, so it has to end at n minus 1, all the way at the bottom, okay? And then j, well, where does j go? j counts from here all the way on over, all right? So it starts at k, okay? So if k here is 0, it starts at 0. It starts at the uh, very left side. If it's here, if k equals 1, it starts at 1 and works its way over, okay? Because there would be a 0 already in that spot. So j starts at k, goes to k plus 1, etc. all right? And it also goes all the way to the end, to n minus 1, all right? So those guys um, are the aij, and this also applies to the bi um, matrix, okay? So the end result of all of this for forward elimination, okay, is... A matrix, well, let me, let me skip that. Let me just write the, the elements down. I have A0, 0, that hasn't been changed. A0, 1, that also hasn't been changed on the top. All the way over to A0, N minus 1, that hasn't been changed. Below it, I have a 0. Then I have A1, 1, that's been changed once, all the way to A1, N minus 1, that's been changed once. Then below that, I have... You know, uh, I'm going to skip a bunch of rows, right? Now I have zeros all the way except for this last guy down here, which should be a n minus 1, n minus 1. And it's been changed every, it's been changed n minus 1 times, okay? Because by the time I get down to, I do this one, this one here, that changes that one. Then I do this one, that changes that one. I do this one, that changes that one. So it goes all the way over. It gets changed n minus 1 times, okay? And now, this is my U matrix dotted with X uh, zero, X one, all the way to X N minus one. And that equals my B matrix, B zero, which has not changed, B one, which changed once, all the way to B N minus one, which also changed N minus one times. Okay, so that's going to be my end result, is this U matrix dot X is equal to B, okay, where B is, you know, B new. It's been updated. So now let's go ahead and look at our example uh, of how to code forward elimination, all right? So here's the forward elimination uh, uh, algorithm, all right? Um, it, so here I'm just defining an example matrix A. Okay, there's nothing special about it, just defining an A and a B. Um, and in this first part, if I hit Control-Enter, okay, 
it will print out A and B. That's all this is doing. It says beginning, and then it prints out some dashes and some A's and B's and prints out the value of A and B. Okay? Now let's look at the forward elimination algorithm. Here is the forward elimination algorithm. I've written up here the index notation of what we had previously written on our paper. And notice that there are three loops going on. A loop over K, a loop over I, and a loop over J. The loop over K has the range that we said before. It goes from zero, and remember it goes to n minus two, that last one's non-inclusive. The range for I goes from K plus one to n minus one, remember n's non-inclusive, all right? And the range for J goes from K to n, all right? So let's step through this for a minute, all right? And see what it gives, all right? And, and see if we can't understand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit run, and what this is going to do is going to print out at every iteration here the value of k, the value of i, the value of j, the ratio, all right, and a, and then it's going to print out b, and it's going to give us some extra spaces. And we're going to look at that. So I'm going to run this first. Boom, the whole thing ran. And I'm going to scroll up here to the top, and let's follow what happened. So this says forward elimination. So the first thing that happens is I make k 0. I make i1, and I make j0. So remember, k is the diagonal that I'm on, the column that I want to work on. So k is 0. i is the row right below the diagonal, so that's 1. And j is 0, that's the column that I'm working on to eliminate. And the first thing it calculates is that ratio, a i k divided by a k k. Okay, a i k, we'll look at that, that's a 1, 0, so that would be right there, divided by a, k, k, which is minus 3 right there. So I'm taking that one, dividing by that one, 5 divided by 3 gives me a ratio of 1.66, all right, 1.67, all right? And then what do I do in this first step? So now that I have my ratio, notice I have that for all of the columns that I'm going to work my way through. I take a, i, j, and I subtract the ratio, 1.666, multiplied by the row above it, all right, which is k equals 0, all right, so the row above it, the same one as my diagonal is on, uh, comma j, so it goes all the way across, and any time I'm doing this one, I'm looking at the one above it, one above it, the one above it, all right? So the very first time I do that, that's going to give me 1.667 multiplied by 3, okay, and that's 5 thirds, so 5 times 5 thirds times 3 gives me a 5, and then this minus equals is going to subtract that, and it's going to give me a 0, and that very first one is a 0, all right? The next time j increments, so now j is equal to 1, I still have the same ratio, and I move down the, the, col uh, the row to this next column. So I'm still on this row, I move down here, I update that one, okay? Now j increases to 2, and I update that one, and j increases to 3, and I update that one. All right? So I work my way down in this inner loop, innermost loop, down all these, uh, on the same row, down the columns. I use that ratio, and I multiply by the one above it, right? So for instance, in going on this last step, right, previously I had a minus 2, minus 2. So it multiplies this top one by 5 thirds, all right? adds it on here, and you know, or, or subtracts it, right? So minus two times negative number gives me a plus, uh, you know, 10 thirds and 10 thirds uh, uh, and six thirds gives me four thirds right there, all right? Or minus uh, uh, six thirds gives me four thirds, all right? That's where that one comes. And then at the very end, I also update my B vector. So here I had the B vector was 6, 13, 3, minus 4 before, and now it updates that second uh, element, which, you know, if you remember when you augment it as a, as a column matrix, goes right there. All right? Perfect. Okay, I've got uh, the first one done. So now what happens next in the Gauss elimination algorithm, right? If I do this one, the next thing I have to do is get zeros in this one. So I have to go down a row. So how do I go down a row? I increment i. So that's, what, that's why this i loop is the next most inner loop. So now I start j over, but I go i2, but I still have k0 because I'm still working on this diagonal right there, okay, with that 3. So I'm going to take this row now, and I'm going to make my ratio here, minus 3, minus 3. What does that come out to? 1, 
Okay, so now I'm going to go through and add all of the elements in the second row, right? Multiply the top row by one and add it in. Top row by one, top row by one, add it in. So I'm going to loop through the entire row, go through all the columns. So J is zero, I do that one. J is one, I do that one. J is two, I do that one. J is uh, three, and I do that one. Okay, update them all the way down. Uh, uh, down the way I go, and finally I update B, okay, in the very last case. All right, now what happens? I go down the row again, so now I go down to three, and now I work on that row right there. So I do that one, the first time I make that one a zero, second time I fix that one, the third time I fix that one, okay, and the fourth time I work on that guy, okay? So now at the end of that I and J, I've now finished the k equals zero part, okay? I have made zeros out of that whole piece, you know, down this column here, and I need to move to this one. So k now, I get to my outermost loop, okay? k now increments by one, and I go to k equals one right here. And now I start the process all over again. I start at i equals two, so I start below that diagonal. So instead of starting at k i equals one, that would take me all the way uh, all the way back to here. Rather, I don't want to start there. I want to start here because I want to use that diagonal. And I make a ratio. Um, in this case, I'm taking seven over uh, uh, or excuse me, yeah, seven over five. Isn't that what it's giving me? Yep, point one two five. Okay. Um, and um, I take that ratio and uh, work my way down. Uh, this row here, so I get a zero there. I update this one as I do the J, next J. I update that one as I do the next J. Then I increment I. Now I get a zero here. Work my way down here. Work my way down here. Okay, hopefully this is starting to get redundant. All right. And then finally, I work my way onto the last row, um, and I uh, take that guy um, and um, work on it. Okay. So finally, I'm now to the very last... Um, uh, I'm, I don't know what I said on the last piece, just disregard it. That was a little confusing. I just confused myself a little bit. Now I'm to the very last one, okay? Now I'm to this diagonal right here, okay? And I want to get a zero in that spot. So that's where I have now k equals two. So I scroll back down to k equals two, all right? And what am I doing? I want to put a zero right there. Well, how do I do that? I make a ratio of that guy divided by the one, uh, the one right above, uh, excuse me, that guy divided by the one right above it. And we can't see what it is here, but it was uh, 0.0625 divided by this minus 6.3975. So that's what gives me the ratio there, okay? I take those two things, I make the ratio, I get a zero there, I update that one, all right? And I'm done, okay? Once I update this guy, and once now down here, I update that one, and now I'm done and made my upper triangular matrix. Look, I have zeros, zero and a zero there, and I update B, all right, and I'm done. Okay, so that's how you do forward elimination. All right. Now, let's go on to part B. Back substitution. Back substitution is easier Okay, back substitution. Back substitution should be uh, easier than forward elimination. So let's remember, so back substitution is the second step in Gauss elimination. Okay, um, so let's think about this algorithm again for back substitution. So remember, I've got this matrix going on right here, okay? And um, let me just maybe make a copy of that and pull it down so I don't have to rewrite it. Let me make sure I get that all in there. All right, so let me pull this back up. Okay, so remember that what I wanna do is I wanna start at the bottom, okay? So let me just write down here, right, procedure. So start at the bottom.
okay? And I want, so this would be row n uh, minus one. Let me do equals like that, n minus one, all right? And I wanna solve for x n minus one, right? So that's the very first thing I do. And then I'm gonna move to row n minus two, and I'm gonna move the known x sub i, okay, um, and their coefficients to the right-hand side with b, right? So move them to the, the right-hand side with b, okay? And then I'm going to divide by the diagonal, okay, which is aii, okay, to solve for xi, right? So I start at the bottom, I just divide that over, and then as I come up, I take all of the ones that aren't the diagonal, move them all over the right-hand side, I divide by the diagonal, and that's how I'm going to solve for xi, okay? And now I'm going to repeat moving up the matrix, okay, until the top. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this like that. Move up the next row, move up the next row, move up the next row. Okay, so just like we wrote with the other one, we can write this with index notation. Okay, so we can write this precisely with index notation, right? So how do I do that? So for the very bottom one, it's pretty easy. I write x n minus one is equal to b n minus one divided by the diagonal, a n minus one, n minus one, right? That just expresses that I, to solve for this one, it equals that divided by that guy, okay? What about all the others? All the others look like this, I have um, bi minus a sum, and I'll write what it is in a second, but I have aij multiplied by xj, right? So that's, you know, aij, you know, a11, or excuse me, you know, a01 times x1, uh, a whatever times, you know, x2, a03 times x3, etc. So that's that multiplication, and I've moved all of them over to the right-hand side, so I'm subtracting by that. All right, well, what, which numbers do I do? Well, I do um, j is equal to, so I'm summing over the j, equal to i plus 1 to n minus 1. So why i plus 1? Well, I want to not do the diagonal. I want to do everything but the diagonal, okay? And there I'm going to solve for xi. So if I have a11, I'm solving for x1, so I want to start at 2 and go all the way to n minus 1, all the way to the end, all right? So this is this step right here. Uh, move all of them to the right-hand side. Okay, now I need to do this step, divide by the diagonal, which is 1 divided by AII. Okay, and this one I'm going to repeat for I equals N minus 2, right? That's the second to last row, N minus 3, all the way up to row 0. All right? So that is the index notation for back substitution. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and look at the Python code for that one. Here's back substitution. Okay, this is a different matrix than uh, I did before. It's not the same problem. I just picked another one to do back substitution for. So let me load this one up, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Let me print out uh, I, let me do I colon I colon J colon J, okay, I only have two this time, and let me print out the sum, XI sum, and is there anything else I want to find? Um, I'll just do that for now, and then I'll come down here, and I'm going to print out x, y. Well, I'll just print out all of x. Okay? So let's run that guy and see what it does for us. Um, 
Did we print? Let me just run the whole thing and see if it prints. Uh, it doesn't print A and B for me. Let me have it print A and B too. Print A, print B. Not G, B. All right, uh, I'm gonna give myself some space here. Print, some space. Give me a line in between. All right, so what does it first have, okay? So I have my upper triangular matrix and I have another matrix on the bottom, B. Okay, so what happens the first time through? So I make up a new X, I give it an empty array, all right, of zeros of the same size. So this is four by one. And at the very beginning, okay, what do I do up here? I solve for the very first element, which is the bottom one, okay? So I'll run that again just so we can have that. So what does that do? That solves for the bottom one. And it looks like the bottom one is zero because my B N minus one, my end right there is zero. Okay, so that one solves for zero. Maybe it's not the greatest example because you can see that it's zero. Okay, but it's zero. Now I start working my way um, over um, all of the, the rows from the bottom to the top. Okay, so that's my outer loop, right? That's the biggest thing I do is I loop my way back up the rows. So I start at n minus two. Okay, well, this is not that big. It's already only, it's gonna count from zero to three, so n minus two is equal to two, okay? So then I start from j, I start from i plus one and go to the end. Remember, if I go to n in my range, I'm only going to n minus one. So j starts at three, okay? And then I start to add up a i j times x j. Well, x j was zero, so the sum just adds zero onto it, okay? But, and, and then I'm at three and that was it. So this sum just ends up giving me zero the first time through, zero, okay? And now I solve for x um, here. So I move two times zero over, that's what happened. I did two times zero to get that sum, okay? And then I take bi, which is minus seven, right here. And I say bi minus that sum, zero, and divide by aii which is minus seven right there, right? Because i is equal to uh, uh, two, right? And so that's two, two right there. And so I take um, bi, which is b at two right there, divided by minus seven, and what do I get? I get a one, okay? Now I've solved for that one. Now I come out of here and I start my sum over at zero again. And so notice that this sum is just like we practiced when we practiced loops with sums in an earlier case, okay? So now what I'm doing is now i goes down to one instead of two. So that means this guy can start at two, and so it goes and looks up here and it says, I'm gonna do eight times one. Remember my solution to x is one, so that's eight times one, and it adds eight into my sum. And then it goes to the next x and it says I'm gonna do uh, you know, it goes to three, I'm gonna do one times zero, which is zero, adds it onto the sum, that's still eight. So my sum ends up being eight after this inner loop. And now I get to this x uh, uh, here, um, and I solve for bi, which is now one, which is three, three minus, uh, 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 now I have uh, eight, okay, and I get minus five. And then I take AII, which is this guy right there, and I take five, divi or five divided by five, or excuse me, three minus eight is negative five divided by five, and I get a minus one, okay? Now, I don't wanna get too much in, more in the weeds because I'm afraid I'm just gonna keep losing you, okay? So if, if, if you're able to follow that, great. If you're not, I want you to step through this, okay? Um, you know, maybe uh, pause the video, all right, and look at these values and see if they make sense to you plug the eyes in, figure it out, look at them, okay? See if you can't make sense of how this is stepping through. How does this relate to that index notation? Make sure you understand that. It's important to understand the algorithm, okay? The very last thing that it does is I then ends up as a zero, okay? I'm at the very top row up here, and it's gonna go through and sum up two times zero, five times one, or minus five times one, minus five times negative one, sums them all up, look, that sum is equal to zero, okay? That sum uh, is now bi, bi is six, six minus the sum of zero, divided by the diagonal, which is a minus three, six divided by minus three is minus two, 
and that's my final answer there. Boom, okay? X is minus two, minus one, and zero. All right, the, why does it have a minus zero? There's some tiny little bit amount of error, and it's probably minus zero times, you know, plus something, something times 10 to the minus 20, and it's just calling it zero, all right? Um, the last thing I do here is I show you can take a norm and the dot product, okay, and we'll learn a little bit more about this next time when we learn about numpy functions for doing arrays and linear algebra to show that the residual is zero. And the residual is just what happens if I take a times x minus b, right? So if I take a times x minus b, if I have the answer, I should have a zero vector. And a norm is just like the distance formula that takes the square of all the elements and the square root of their sum, and it gives me a total of zero. So that tells me that I actually have the right answer. Okay, so that is backward substitution. Okay, so let's just conclude our video um, by summarizing what we did. So what did we do? We said that Gauss elimination Python consisted of a forward elimination step and a backward elimination step. And we said, let's be a little more precise about this. We talked through the algorithm. We said, what's the procedure? And we wrote out an index notation that describes it. And if you can understand the index notation here, okay, then you can understand how this translates into code. And we had the forward elimination, which took a triply nested loop, okay, which is, which is harder, because we had to do the diagonals and then the rows and the columns, okay? Um, and, and we could rewrite that one out and we coded it. And then the back substitution took two loops, okay? And in this one, we just had to start at the bottom, do the first one, and then work our way back up to the top. And we had an index notation here that involved a sum. And so we had to do that sum in one of the loops, and then another one of the loops was for each value of i as we worked our way up, all right? So that is coding gas elimination. Um, you have access to, the, uh, to PDF versions of both of these codes for you to study. Um, and they should help you with your homework. So with that, I'll say goodbye and sign off and wish you the best.